Hey guys, Tony Kami here. Welcome to our second Android tutorial on creating a login and register form. In this tutorial, we're going to define methods that allow a user date details to be stored in a file on the form. So the first thing we need to do is create the attributes of a user. A user can have a name, a username, and a password. A user can also have an, an age. So there are two ways to create a user. One is by providing all the details. Sorry, just need to give the type. So by providing its name, age, username, and password. So when you create a new user in this way, this is the first thing that happens. So we need to store all the parameters in the variables okay so store the password all right that's that done so this is one way of creating a new user when we know its name age username and password right so when we know all its attributes another way of creating a, a user is when we only know its username and its password so when we create a user like this, we'll just set the username to username, set the password to password. And also we need to give the age a default value, so set the age to minus one when we don't know its age. And when we don't know the name, we just set it to nothing, basically. So these are the two ways of creating a new user. Now, we need to also create another Java class that will, uh, that will deal with storing the de um, details of this user in a, on a local database, so basically on the phone. So you could local store. So we need to give the name, we need to provide the name of the file where the user details will be stored when they've logged in or when they've logged in. So static final the name and we'll call that user details. And also, we need to create a shared preference. I'll tell you more about shared preference. Okay, so shared preference allows us to store data on the phone. So, we need to create a constructor, which is the first thing that runs when a user local store is created. To create a, to instantiate a um, shared preference, an activity has to do this. However, user local store is a Java class, so it cannot instantiate a shared preference. Another way we can do this is if we force all the activities that use this Java class to give us their context, this will allow us to use them to create the shared preference. So now to create the shared preference, we'll just do that context dot get shared preference and we need to give it a name the name of the file where the shared preference the um, data is coming from and also this is a zero there for default value so when you create a user local store you need to give it a context from the activity which is using it and this will be used to get the shared preference so now we need to generate methods that we can use to get user data from the local database and also to set the user data. So the first thing we'll do is to, sorry about that. Okay, we need to store the user data. And to store user data, we need to give the method the users, the user which data we're storing and so to do this, we need to the editor. We'll just call it SP editor. So this allows us to edit what is contained in the shared preference. So to edit the user local database preference. So now we need to store the attributes of the user which has been passed to this method. So post string. We need to store its name. So we'll get the name by doing user dot name. And we need to store its username, 
Maybe to store its password. And finally, we need to store the age. So what this does is updates everything that is currently stored in the shared preference with the attributes of the user of the user that has been passed to this method. So the finally, what we need to do is commit it. So when you make changes to a shared preference, you always have to commit it in the end. Now, we also need to create another method that allows us to get the user who's logged in. So I'll just call that get logged in user. Okay. So the reason I've chosen to use to put user there rather than void is that this method needs to return a user. So if an activity is get if an activity calls the method get logged in user, a user will be returned which will have the attributes of the logged in user. So to do this we need to get the name of the user who's currently Log, logged on or stored in this database so get string name and the default value if there's no name will be nothing and now we need to get the password of the user who's currently stored and now finally we need to get the age so get int rather than get string age and we want the default value to be minus one right so now we've received all the attributes about the user who's currently stored on the local database we need to create a new user call it stored user and we need to give the user this attribute so the name age username and password remember we define that here so by we can create a new user by giving it all these details which is what we've done here and now we need to return the new user which we just created all right so that's that done another method we need here is to set user logged in so if a user is logged in If a user is logged in, we need to. S this will be called with true, and if a user is logged out, this will be called with false. So we need to store this. We need to store the data, this d um, data on the shared preference also. So I'll just say, sp editor, put boolean, and I'll call that logged in. So you guys will see how this will be used later on and logged in so we need to commit the changes that we've made finally last method we need here is to clear all the data that is, that is stored about the user so clear user data and to do this we also need an editor because we're going to edit the shared preference and we simply need to just call clear this will clear everything that is inside the shared preference and we need to commit the changes that we've made to the shared preference all right so this class allows us to store user data on a file which will allow which the shared preference does for us and the get logged in user so gets the um, details gets the user who's currently logged on, whose um, details is stored on the local database, and also set the user logged in. So if the user's logged in, we set this to true. If logged in, logged out, we set this to false, and also clear the user data, which we would want to do when the user's logging out. All right, so now to use all these methods we've created, register. So when a user registers, we want to create a new user. So firstly, we need to get the name, age, username, and password that the, that the 
person using this app has entered so we need to get the name so to do that we need to get the text from the edit text view okay so now we have the name now we need to get the username now the user has entered we need to get the password finally we need to get the age but this is a bit different so integer.passInt this allows us to convert whatever the user has entered into an an int because the age is stored in an in, in an int form so we need to now get the age all right so now we've received all the attributes that the person registering has provided we need to now create a new user with all these attributes so all right so now when a user registered registers we can just have his details here all right now in the login page when the user logs in we want to also do the same thing wait sorry Yep. No, we'll, we'll come back to this later. So now main activity. When a user logs out, what we want to do is clear. So wait, first we need to create a local store here. So we need the main activity to have access to the local store. And remember when we create a new local store, we need to give the local store our context and that's done by saying this and now we can when the user logs out we can clear user data and also we can set user logged into false all right we also need login to have access to the user local store so we need to do the same thing there So when the user logs in, if the login is successful, we want to set user logged into true. And also we need to store data about the logged in user. So in the next tutorial, we'll see how we can collect the data about the logged in user from a server and we'll, um, We'll store the data about the logged in user inside this variable here. So now we can say store user data. And I'll just say equals new user no. No. So we'll improve this method in the next next tutorial. But essentially all I'm saying is when a user logs in, we need to tell the um, local database that a user is logged in and we also need to store the um, details about the user which is logged in. Finally in this tutorial what we need to do is create so wait sorry so we need an on start method so what I've done is override implement method. So these are all the methods that an activity can have. So we need an on start. Where is that? No, it's an act. On start is right. Sorry. No. Do that again. On start. Okay, there it is. So on start. So every time this the main activity opens, we need a way to authenticate the user to make sure a user is logged in. So what we can do is create a method here called which returns a boolean true if the user authentication if the user is logged in and false if the user is logged on we call it authenticate which will basically tell us if a user is logged in or logged out 
So what we need to do is if uh, one more thing we forgot to do. We need to create another method here and that tells us if a user is logged in or not. So in the user local store we need a method that tell that looks at the local database to tell us if the user is logged in or not. So we say if user local dot get boolean. I remember we stored the logged in data in with this key. So if the user is logged in, I will make that default false. Return true. So if the user is logged in, we return true. And if the user is logged out, we return false. So now here in the main activity, we can say if we can just return user local store dot get user okay so this will return true if the user is logged in so we can now say if authenticate is equal to true we can display we can do anything else we want to do in the main activity and what we would like to do is display the user details so create another variable which displays user details so if authentication is correct we want to display the user detail so now to display the user detail we just say username dot set text so remember the edit text in the main activity is what sh is what's going to hold the information about the um, user who's logged on so we want it to display details of the user who's logged on so we need to first get the user who's logged on by doing user equals so we need to get the user who's logged on get user logged in which is just defined oh sorry get logged in user all right and so we need to get the display the username of the user we need to display the name and finally we need to display the age so you can't display an indirectly you have to display a string in an edit text so that's that so when when this activity starts it will authenticate make sure the user is logged on and if the user is log logged on it will display the user details and it does this by getting the information about the user who's lo um by getting the yeah information about the user who's user whose details stored on the user um on the local database and then setting it in the edit text so that's this tutorial done in the next tutorial we'll see we'll discuss how we can connect this everything here to a server which I'll create in triple web host which is a free web host so you guys can also create a server there and a database to to follow to follow me as I do that so thank you guys for watching a bit confusing but just pause it and go through it again and you understand what I'm doing thanks for watching guys